Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you guys. And usually, you don't listen to anything that a three and nine team is telling you because I mean, if you're three and nine. Why should I listen to you? So speak up. Calls EG frauds, and we say, oh, "Come on, man, you're a three and nine team. How can you be calling them out like this?" And then all of a sudden, back to back games. Not only does EG lose, but they get absolutely destroyed. Almost a 20k gold deficit as Gory styles on them to kick off this week. And then in the rivalry, the grudge match, a then 3 and 10 fly quest all of a sudden are pumping them. Uh, crazy. Unthinkable that we're getting at this point in time that we would have the reverse of the fly quest evil geniuses situation. We should have believed the speaker all along because the frauds, FlyQuest, of course they knew the other fraud. They can recognize, the you know, yeah. I'm not ready to slap that fraud label onto the evil geniuses. Certainly a, a struggle point this week has been for them, the way that they've looked in their matches. And this one latest one against FlyQuest is not a good look from this evil geniuses squad because they were able to be taken advantage of by this FlyQuest team that brought Vikla back into that lineup. And man, Vikla looked about as good as he's ever looked in the LCS and this one against Jojo Pian and the rest of the evil geniuses. Geniuses, excuse me. Maybe all it took was Papa Smithy and the boys saying, no, no, we will bench you. Spirax plays one game and then they say, well, we only ever intended him to play one game. Yeah, yeah, sure, okay. Then why do an announcement video? But anyways, yeah, Vikla comes back and maybe that is the fire that needed to be lit underneath them to be like, no, if you play bad, it do doesn't matter your rookie the split from the LCK, how good you were. We're going to bench you if you keep playing poorly. Oh, man. Well, I mean, number one, I think Spirax is playing this game against Evil Genius as if they're able to turn that one around against NRG. Before 100%. that, 100%. let's have that discussion. And secondly, yes, you go into this one, and I think that, you know, the this is something that has been necessary for this FlyQuest roster to have some type of shakeup, have some type of consequences for this poor play, poor coordination from the team. And so to see this type of change behind the scenes this is something that we've asked for. Maybe not necessarily in the type of fashion that it did happen, The you know, what happened this past weekend, but this is something that needs to be set the tone for this FlyQuest team that has had these struggles. And at the very least, it should be a confidence boost for them. All of a sudden, a win, and Vulcan, oh, he, he remembered his Twitter password. Oh, just like that, wow. Crazy how things like that work, my man. I tell you what, I'm on Vulcan's side, though. I wouldn't have been looking for that Twitter password anytime soon before getting this revenge win against Ayla and the geniuses. Hopefully this isn't, you know, the power level that we're going to see out of EG going forward because really back-to-back -back games, JoJo has gotten kind of gapped in that mid lane matchup and across the board, just not even close to the same level we've seen out of them for the first four weeks of the regular season. I'll tell you, this guy, Insanity, in the mid lane, he's an all-pro level mid laner in the LCS. No question! He's 8-3 and three now. Three of these TSM losses he had absolutely nothing to do with. It's five in a row for Team Solo mid. This matchup, APA versus Insanity, low-key, one of the most hype mid lane matchups we've had all split. Best match of the day, easily, between TSM and this Team Liquid squad going that full distance. You saw the whole deal. You saw all the positives of Team Liquid. And you started to see those cracks that still remain in some of their gameplay as you get to trying to convert those early mid leads into that late game domination wasn't the case and i tell you why because there is a giga chat on the side of tsm in that mid lane he is that mid laner for team solo mid insanity coming up mega clutch on that kaisa making sure that a couple of these moments where T uh, team liquid is getting that advantage is winning out overall that there's something going back in the favor of tsm they're staying within that zone that you can get those team fights to take advantage wrestle control back in your favor and man did they do a masterful job on that one i think there's a couple instances where you would go back on the team liquid side and look at some of these engages look at some of these choices you know what was happening there and change it and that's how you get that victory but this was a very thrilling match to watch in the lcs isn't it just poetic that after all the LPL experiment importing PCS players coming over. It's yes, you got Boogie as an import, but the other four fifths 
of this TSM roster are domestic talent. And this is the best looking TSM roster in three years since they made Worlds in 2020? Without question, the best one for TSM and what they've been able to do. It's just really impressive. And it's one of those things that we come back to when you talk about a team that is all committed on the same call and that same vision of how they're going to play the game, what needs to be accomplished to make sure that we are getting these things and knocking down that nexus at the end of the day. This TSM squad's doing it. They're not doing it in, in, you know, if it's pretty, they don't care if it's ugly. They're doing it no matter what. And getting that job done, leading that charge is insanity. The rest of the members are playing well. You're looking at Hanser, talking about Wild Turtle, and I don't want to forget about your boy Chime down there making a couple of key calls and some key engages as well. This TSM team, man, you, you don't want to believe in everything else about the organization. Believe in these five players and what they're putting out there on that LCS rift. Yeah, it seems to be that perfect spice blend of veteran leadership and this new younger talent. Chime, you know, was a guy who on the previous rosters of TSM was the one highlight at times. Obviously, Insanity is new to a starting role at this position. But yeah, him and APA really are shining beacons of light for that domestic mid lane talent. There's not many shining beacons on 100 Thieves right now as they drop their fourth straight. They start the week with a disaster. Ugly loss to Immortals where Closer's doing like 700 damage on Viego, which is supposed to be a pocket pick of his. Follow it up with actually a good early game against Cloud9, but things fell off the rails pretty damn quickly. And it all starts with Quid, where it falls off the rails for those 100 Thieves. You know, normally I wouldn't be trying to nitpick something like this, but I was so frustrated at seeing this happen at that Dragon Pit, seeing him go in on the RE, you know, use the all trying to get in there to get a charm off on that backline, bring that fight to them. Lands on Sven, he gets hooked, he gets bounce castled in the air. The RE's got to get out of there without doing anything in this fight, and it all crumbles apart from there for 100 Thieves. That's where Cloud9 gets that foothold, gets that advantage, where they know that they can take these fights. They know that they can push that envelope and get that snowball rolling. And rolling that snowball did until it was a massive lead, a disastrous performance at that point for 100 Thieves. This is one of those teams that is struggling to such a degree that it is something to talk about, but it's getting blown over or overlooked by people because of how bad FlyQuest has been or other issues happening in the LCS. This is a big one for me, looking at this team, looking at a star player like Doublelift, and these results, they don't add up. And now, 100 Thieves, they're only one game ahead of FlyQuest in the standings, very much in jeopardy of finishing outside of that illustrious top eight in the LCS. And, I mean, Closer is honestly looking like the weakest jungler in the LCS right now, which is a sentence I didn't think I'd be saying until Closer was maybe 45 years old. And Quid, as you mentioned, a kind of, as we were getting more hyped about him, a rough start to this week, I feel like some days just kind of watching this team implode around him. And that's really, you look at someone like Sunday and Doublelift are the two that I'm looking at on this lineup and questioning what they are thinking, what they are feeling at this moment, seeing these performance, seeing this direction for the team. Because this is not what you anyone could have imagined they would have been signing on to or agreeing to join into. Doublelift, of course, earlier at the time when it was him and Bjergsen coming to this 100 Thieves team. Time to retake over, reclaim the throne that you guys have in the LCS. Didn't work out that way. And now he were even, even further away from that with Bjergsen not on that lineup. And then someday as well, another player that's brought in, promised this idea of reinvigoration and getting us back to that level that we know we should be at. It hasn't worked for him either. This is an 100 Thieves team that is in a dangerous free fall, only escaping the you know flames of the community because of some of the other bad instances we have in the LCS. And if FlyQuest, I mean, one single solid performance against EG, and I all of a sudden feel better about them than 100 Thieves over the last couple of weeks. That's how quickly and how low the bar is for these bottom couple of teams in the LCS. I don't want to overreact, but... Kobe should start every single game from now on for T1, even when Faker's healthy. He's the greatest mid laner in the history of the T1 organization. I think it's that obvious. Hey, when you lock up a win against the infamous Nongshim Red Force Powerhouse, oh, <laughs> lock it up, my man Poby coming in clutch. T1, 
they get it done. They do take care of business against a team that they absolutely should. They get the bare minimum green check mark on this one. But I'm giving them an extra small one because of everything that has been going on, all the criticisms, all that attention, hyper attention. I think overall, even uh, you know, looking aside from the non-shim aspect of this series, this was a good performance out there on the rift from T1 as a whole. And I don't want to say that these guys, you know, this is a confidence boosting win, but in a way, it, it should be, especially for the core four of this roster, it should kind of be like a snap wake up call, like, oh, oh yeah, we're world finalists. Even without Faker, we're still some of the best players in the world. I feel like it should just be them kind of grounding themselves and be like, right, we, we do have brains when it comes to macro and can do things without Faker and still be a really good team. It feels like a rope has been thrown out of that pit of despair for T1 getting this victory again mentioning those four players where they can see themselves now pulling out of this pit that they have put themselves in with the, these performances the, this last week. You're looking at that with this Nong Shim win and what this can build off of for this group is what you're talking about. They also, of course, you had Tom who's replaced Bengi coming in and talking about thinks it's going to be a little bit longer possibly for Faker sitting on the sidelines due to his Shocker. injury. Which is something, exactly. Something that is not a shock to a lot of people that know anything about this type of injury and what type of timeline you possibly would need to be on two weeks is absolutely as minimal as possible. And given what we were hearing about it, did not line up. So that is going to be something that's happening. And knowing that now and seeing this performance from the four main members of T1 and the way that Poby kind of stepped up and looked a little bit, you know, more relaxed and kind of able to actually execute what he can do on the riff. That was a big part of it for me and a big reason why I'm feeling a lot better about what T1 could do in these next couple of weeks. Obviously, again, it's Nongshim. We're not getting excited. Get stepped up to another level. On the weekend, they're going up against D+, who have looked much better over the last week and a half. So, Poby, we're glad you had a great game against Fiesta because it's Showmaker next. Oh, man. What a gauntlet you got to go through with this one. Chovy into Fiesta, and then, hey, ramp it right back up into Mr. Showmaker. Got to be ready for it. That is exactly what it takes in the LCK. But that's why I said so good. See, Poby kind of looked more natural, more relaxed, more focused on how what he could do in the game. As long as those nerves kind of stay out of it, which I'm sure they'll be creeping back in a little bit for this D-plus game. But as long as you can keep him managed, I think that you are going to get a solid performance for T1. And yeah, mentally, he's going to be feeling much better heading into that D-plus matchup as there's some other uh, big ones on the table in the LCK this weekend. But that is it today for League Unlock. LEC playoffs kicking off as well this weekend. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, as always. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.